starting had started. started. We are looking for the day when we crown Jesus Lord of all. He is King of kings. He is Lord of lords. And that's the day we're living for. Praise God. When he comes back for his church, he's coming back for the blood washed. He's coming back for the born again. He's coming back for all those who persevere the hardness of this life. This is not an easy life. It gets tough down here. It gets rough down here. But as we persevere with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the uh, paraclete, the one who was sent to come alongside of us and help us, we can make it. We can make it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so as the Holy Spirit guides you day by day, sometimes you may be up. Sometimes you may be down. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Know that greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Praise God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's the joy. That's the joy of knowing that nothing the devil puts on us is going to succeed. Nothing. Whereas we used to say when I lived in Chester, Pennsylvania, not and, not and, not and, no weapon, not and can uh, 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 prevail against us. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God. I, I want to welcome you to the Back to Basics Online Church. It's a church that's making the difference in a lot of people's lives, and we worship God. We worship God. Praise God. We thank God. Thank God for all of you who are online. We've got people from all over the country, all over the nation, all online with us today. Praise God. We see friends up in Idaho. We see friends in New Jersey, Pennsylvania. We see friends in Tennessee. We see you, Colorado. Hey, Jeep girl. We see you. Praise God. We see Nathan. We see all of our friends in Kentucky and, and Tennessee, we just bless God. And we thank God that many will receive this message by way of recording. So I'm going to just uh, get out of the way in a moment. And um, we're going to present our guest pretty soon. We are in for a treat. We've got, we've got young Andrew Hawkins. I say young Andrew Hawkins. And he's going to be our presenter today, and we'll bring him on in a moment. Praise God. The Holy Ghost said, ask Andrew if he would bring the word. And uh, Andrew said he would. So we're excited. We're just ex excited. And we know Cheryl is right by his side. And little Miss Hawkins is right there praying for her daddy as her daddy brings the word of God today. What a mighty God we serve. We're excited. We are excited. Um, just want to give a, a shout out to my son Wes and ask Wes if he will come on and uh, if he's got his audio and stuff together. Wes, would you lead us in prayer, son? Do we have sound, Wes? I don't hear from you. I know you're on and trying to get your sound thing together. <clears throat> okay, well, let's do another thing. We'll bring Wes on later on, hopefully. And let's ask Nathan. Nathan Nathan was online early. Nathan, Nathan, I think, was the first one online today. Nathan, hey, buddy, would you lead us in prayer, please? And Pray for Andrew as he, he preaches today. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Very well, Nathan. God bless you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well. Uh, my computer wasn't working. Okay. We got you now, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for everyone that's joining. 
Lord, I pray that you watch over everyone that's here today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Nathan. And God bless you and your family. Nathan Rainville Branham. He's 12 years old. He's one of our soldiers. He's a foot soldier for Jesus. He's a foot soldier <clears throat> for Jesus. And we thank God uh, for the prayer. I'd like to introduce to you, um, my friends, I'd like to introduce to you one of our uh, young and dynamic students in the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy, and this is Andrew Hawkins. Andrew lives in Kettering, Ohio, and the Holy Spirit said, ask Andrew to bring the word today. And so we're going to hear what Andrew has to say. say. We just ask God to bless him, let the Holy Ghost anoint him, and we'll listen. I will be in the chat room. I will uh, watch over the chat room and answer any questions. But we, we ask you, uh, even um, before you write anything in the chat window, pay attention to the Word of God. Honor the man of God. Honor the Holy Spirit. And uh, whatever you chat, let it all be to the glory and honor of God. No exchange of recipes today, ladies and gentlemen. No exchanging recipes or where you're going to eat after church. But that's uh, <laughs> Let me focus. Praise God. God bless Andrew. I present Andrew Hawkins. He's coming in his own way to be a blessing to us. Well, hello, everybody. Man, this has been a good time so far. If you, if you guys do have any good recipes, let me know. I'll tell my wife. So, you know. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Carter for allowing me to come on here. I am in the school of Paul Bagley Prophecy, which... If anybody wants to join a ministry, you should do that. It's between Dr. Carter, you know, Dr. or uh, uh, Pastor Marcus, um, Pastor Paul. They do such a good job, just unbelievable teaching. I almost feel bad getting on here and taking up Dr. Carter's time because he's just a man of God, a man of so much wisdom, and there's just so much you can learn from people like Dr. Carter. We're so blessed to have people like that in our time right now, but. As Dr. Carter said, it was kind of funny. He told me to pray over what the Holy Spirit would reveal to me to say. And the only way that we can be successful is if we do yield ourselves over to the Holy Spirit. If we try to do things ourselves, it's not going to work. So I constantly find myself in prayer where it's, you know, Holy Spirit take over, you know, almost like a possession, like take over my body, take over my tongue, take over what I say so that it brings glory to you, Jesus. Don't let me say anything that comes out of me, but let it come out of you. And um, so I ended up, I was really nervous to get on here. I've never done anything like this. <laughs> and I uh, ended up praying. I, and a lot of the time the Lord speaks to me in dreams. And so I ended up taking a nap. And I thought, okay, he'd give me a dream and show me what I should speak about. Well, he didn't give me a dream, but I woke up. And as I was waking up and kind of in that state of where you're, you know, still asleep, still kind of out of it, um, I heard the Lord speak to me. And he said, Andrew, speak what I've shown you. Speak about what I've shown you. So, <laughs> what he showed me. Um, the theme of what I'm going to talk about is being rapture ready. I became a Christian nine years ago, well, close to nine years ago now, um, because of an encounter I had with the Lord in a dream. And he told me to wake people up. He told me to tell people that he was coming back and that he needed me to get as many souls ready as possible. And, he, and a lot of people have had this dream, too. A lot of people have similar dreams. If you get on YouTube, anything like that, you'll see a lot of similar dreams, even talking within the church about the rapture, about the end times, about all this coming together. And um, so um, he even told me um, a little bit about the Antichrist. And when I was having these dreams, I was not a born-again Christian. I didn't know the Bible. Um, I was more of an agnostic. I wasn't atheist. I wouldn't say I didn't believe in God, but I also just didn't know it was true. So I knew that there was a God, but I just didn't know, you know, what God was real. And when the Lord showed up in my dreams, he made it pretty clear, you know. <laughs> and once you see him, you know, there's no turning back. But um, so my theme is rapture ready, and the key verse that I got is in 2 Corinthians 5.20. 2 Corinthians 5.20. Everybody wants to flip to that. I am actually, I have um, the NIV version, but I have a prayer that I actually seen this morning that I thought was really, really interesting. It's in the King James version, so I'm kind of going to flip back and forth between the King James and the NIV, but the NIV is what I'm in right here for uh, 2 Corinthians 
And 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. So we are the ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his spokesmen. And our point on this planet is basically to be that spokesman. You know, an ambassador is a person that's sent to another country on behalf of a country. So the United States, if we want to talk to Russia or China or whatever, we're going to send ambassadors over there to speak on our behalf. Well, what's interesting, you know, a lot of people get the rapture. A lot of people don't understand the logic behind what God is doing in our time. You know, God is not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. There's an order of to things that he does. It makes sense when you really study what he does. You know, he's not just doing random things. Nothing's random. Everything, there's a meaning behind everything. You know, the Jews have a saying, they say, coincidence isn't kosher. You know, there's no coincidence. You know, God is in control. And so the way that the Lord reveals himself to people in, in our time is through us, through, the, through what we say. The Lord said in Matthew, let me find it here, Matthew 12, 39, he said that a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign, but no sign will be given except for the sign of Jonah. And a lot of people um, kind of, um, it, you know, it's, it's kind of really deep when it gets into it. You know, what the Lord's saying is that in Jonah's time, you know, the one that swallowed by the fish because he was trying not to re uh, preach, you know, repentance to Nineveh. In Jonah's time, they did have a major sign, which was a solar eclipse, kind of like what we just had. But that really wasn't what I believe that Jesus was talking about. I believe what Jesus was talking about is that when God is going to warn people about what he's going to do, he's going to use other people to do it. You know, in the old, old, um, Old Testament, he would use prophets, things like that, people that spoke on his behalf. And then in our time, he's using us. He's using the church to speak on his behalf. And right now, the message is be rapture ready. Be ready at all times. I was reading a, uh, a um, uh, like an article, um, and it was a doctor that was writing it. And uh, I might actually have it here. I don't want to pull it out, though, because I don't want to mess up anything. Everything's working perfect, and I have so much trouble with my computer. I just do not want to do anything crazy. But the article basically talked about how every moment he wakes up, he prays that, you know, uh, Lord, make sure that I'm ready if the rapture happens today. And then before he goes to bed, make sure I'm ready if the rapture happens tonight. Like every day, every second, he is praying, you know, make sure that I'm rapture ready, you know. And I think that's something that we've, a, a, a lost, forgotten message. You read a lot of the New Testament. I was mind blown, Dr. Carter. When I, read, when I first started having these dreams about the rapture and all that, and I started getting into the Bible and reading it and seeing what it had to say, I was so mind-blown about how much of the Bible was about, specifically the end times. You know, God has been preparing for over 5,000 years for, our, for us to be in the time that we're in today. And like you said with the song that you played, you know, we are going to crown Jesus Christ. We are going to crown our King. And then not only that, he has an inheritance for each and every one of us, that's beyond what anyone can imagine. I mean, I've seen a pastor that said one time, within five minutes of stepping foot into eternity, into heaven, we're going to wish we prayed more, we served more, we did more, you know. And we're essentially in that five minutes right now. We're in that last five minutes. So we're basically at a point where we're, are we going to pray more? Are we going to do more? Are we going to try to do more for the Lord right now? Are we going to get on fire, you know. And I was actually led... Uh, something that kept coming to my heart when I was preparing this message was the uh, parable of the ten virgins in Matthew 25. And essentially from Matthew, what is it? I wrote it down here. Matthew 24, 36 through all of chapter 25, the Lord repeats over and over again, watch. You know, therefore be ready. You know, because I'm coming like a thief at night. Watch, be ready. And um, in, the, in the parable of the ten virgins, you had the five wise, five foolish. And you know, there's speculation over the oil and the lambs, things like that. You know, what does it mean? You know, a lot of people say the five that were wise had the Holy Spirit. The five that were unwise did not have the Holy Spirit. And I would agree with that. That does sound, you know, biblically correct to me. But I think the point is that the Lord wants us to be ready for his return. And uh, for Christians, if you read in the New Testament, um, let me see here see if I wrote this one down. But in the New Testament, there's a couple times where it alludes that even though we do not know the day or hour, we will know the season. If we are walking faithfully with the Lord, 
he is going to reveal it to us. And for me, it was dreams. It was dreams for me when he woke me up. You know, a lot of people, it could be other things, you know. He speaks through numbers. He speaks through a lot of different things. But over and over again, the message that he pours in my heart to tell people is to be rapture ready. And so um, I ended up, I was a little unsure of how, you know, I was like, well, Lord, you know, I could talk about the dreams, but that's going to be kind of quick. You know, i got 30 minutes to kind of talk about this. So I, I was kind of praying about some verses and stuff to give to you guys, kind of share about the importance of being ready in our time. And um, it's kind of funny. I, I watch a pastor online from Australia. His name is Pastor Steve Ciccoloni. And I think anybody should look him up on YouTube. He's a great pastor. Um, I've actually been trying to get Pastor Paul to do a, an interview with him. That would be really cool. But um, um, I kept hearing the words peace and safety. I kept hearing the words over and over again, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. And um, and this has been for about maybe a good week or two. I've been really feeling that on my heart. We're in that time where when they say peace and security or peace and safety, whatever. And um, as I got up this morning, I was a little nervous. I was kind of trying to organize everything, get everything right and ready. And uh, Pastor Stephen ended up putting up a seven-minute video. So I'm like, you know, let's watch it real quick. Just kind of get filled with the Holy Spirit and everything, get a message. And he talked about... Uh, I, I, I was just so mind blown. I mean, it's so amazing when the Lord speaks. But he talked about, it's 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. And it says, Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Again, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. It's going to be unexpected. I and mean, in my dreams, it was not nuclear bombs going off. It wasn't war going on or anything. It was literally just a random night, and bam, we were gone, you know. So uh, he says he comes like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on pregnant women, and they will not escape. Well, I've been feeling in my heart for a long time now that we've been at this time. Um, a lot of my family has been having a lot of dreams, especially my uh, cousin Vanessa has been having a lot of dreams about this sudden destruction that's coming. And she sees it in the form of tidal waves that are coming. She sees it in the form of war, just basically chaos that breaks out out of nowhere. And um, the point of the rapture, what God does is, since we are his ambassadors, God essentially, when he raptures us, when he takes us off the planet, he is telling the world that now there is no longer going to be any sign given. There is no longer going to be any more time left. He is going to pour down his wrath on this planet. And that's why it's important to be ready for the rapture. Um, an ambassador, you know, there's laws within the UN that states that ambassadors, so say if like you had a United States ambassador that were to get killed in like Russia or something, and uh, it was a blatant attack, you know, blatant attack against the United States, that is actually a term that can, that that's a declaration of war. If you kill an ambassador, it is a declaration of war. Well, look what's going on right now in the world. Look at the Christians that are being killed right now, that are being slaughtered. Even the Jews, for that matter. I mean, there is so much anti-Semitism. There's so much anti-Christianity going on in the world right now. People are attacking God's ambassadors. So, when a country declares war against a country, what they're going to do is they're going to pull their ambassadors home. They're going to call all their ambassadors home before they go to war against that country because you don't want your people to get caught in the fire. Well, that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to call us home to protect us because that is going to be the only way to protect us. You know, in Noah's day, he had the ark with the flood. But in our day, you can't build a flood when there's fire destroying the planet. So he's going to protect us by rapturing us off this planet. And we get to enjoy, um, a lot of people say seven years. Um, the Bible says seven weeks, which we translate to years, things like that. But essentially there's a time where we're in heaven enjoying paradise while it's all chaos breaking loose on the earth. And then that's when we have the second coming of the Lord, when we come back down with the Lord. But I thought it was so funny. I was, I was talking about this peace and safety, and I kept telling it in my heart. And then Pastor Steve was talking about peace and safety, and he, he talked about how uh, the Democrat Party right now and the Labor Party, and I don't really get in the political part, but I thought this was really interesting. The Democrat Party and the Labor Party are pushing what's called safe zones. Um, it's safe zones, safe schools. Uh, safe injections and safe um, oh what was the last one safe um, safe zones safe schools safe injections oh and safe um, suicides so 
basically, essentially what they're trying to push is that they're wanting certain points where if it's a safe zone, what it is, it's a place where a woman can have an abortion. And as young as 12 and 13 can, can go in there and have an abortion, there's nothing the parents can say. A safe school is a point where the schools can indoctrinate children sexually and push, you know, a um, like a, a, a sexual, is it, you know, teaching, you know, if you want to be a transgender, then they teach you, okay, it's okay, this is what you need to do. And parents have no say over this. And then uh, the safe injections is a, what they call a safe way of committing suicide. So if you want to commit suicide, the government will actually help you and insist you on doing that. And then the safe, um, uh, the safe, uh, what was the last one? Safe school, safe zones. It's just so crazy. But anyways, it's the point that they're calling it safe, you know. And the Bible says when they say peace and safety, guess what? There's sudden destruction. Well, look over and over again. You got the safe school. It leads to sudden destruction. You got the safe zone. It leads to sudden destruction. The safe, um, you know, injection. It leads to sudden destruction. <coughs> so the point is that the governments, without even knowing it, are preaching Bible prophecy. They are telling us what is about to happen. They are telling us what they're going to do. They are basically telling us that we don't need God, that they can think for us. And they're even to the point of, since they've tarnished the name of Jesus, now they're attacking parents. Now they're trying to tarnish families. They're trying to break up families. And I see it really bad like with, with kids that are in school right now. Um, you know, Paul said that in the last days to Timothy, he talked about how that children would be disobedient to their parents. He lists all these things that would happen in the last days. And you read it, and it is, uh, I mean, it is literally what we're seeing over through everything and throughout the whole world. It's not just the United States. It's not just, um, you know, Israel. or anything. It's, it's throughout the whole world that we're seeing this. And I would argue that we're kind of in a scarier spot here in the United States because, to me, when Jesus talks about coming like a thief in the night, I believe he was kind of talking about, us, people that are living in a country that seems safe. You know, for us, we don't see we don't see what's going on in the Middle East where you got, you know, Christians and or Christians and Jews and Muslims for that matter, you know. You got Jews, Muslims, Christians all being slaughtered because of a certain religion. You got governments that are stopping, you know, through communism and socialism. You got governments that won't even allow people to preach the name of Jesus or they'll be thrown in prison. Look at Trump. Since Trump's been elected, look at all the pastors. He's already from North Korea, from Turkey, all these pastors that, that came back to the United States because of them speaking the gospel. You know, So we are very blessed to live in a country where we can speak the truth, where we can speak that. But unfortunately, it's kind of a curse with it because when you live in such a – and Israel experienced this too in their time where they enjoyed so much prosperity that they then turned from the Lord. It was almost like it, you know, they it, it 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 made them forget what their ancestors did, what they had to go through in order to give them that peace and, and safety, you know. And um, so we live in a in a time where, in our country, I I believe we are really experiencing that thief in the night statement that Jesus made over and over again. I don't know of any other time in history where, if you were to go to people and say, if you were to start knocking on doors and tell people, hey, do you believe Jesus is coming back? I guarantee 90% of the people would say, no, I, I don't, you know. I believe, I, and if, in fact, I'll go even beyond that. I believe people, if Jesus were to come right now, people would think it's an alien invasion before it's the Lord. I believe that's how indoctrinated the schools and our governments have made people believe, how discredited they've made the Bible, even though the Bible is the truth. And for me, I was fortunate because I was part of that people that for a long time really did not think that the Bible was all truth. But when I seen the Lord with my own eyes, you know, it really <laughs> it changed my mind pretty quick. But, uh, and that's actually one thing, you know, as far as the rapture, that's one thing that the Lord did show me. And uh, I was at a, um, a conference where a man named L.A. Marzulli was there, and I'm sure a lot of you probably heard of him, but he was there. And um, he was talking about how uh, when we go up in the rapture, then they come down. So the fallen angels, the demons, the things like that, that are behind the scenes kind of controlling things as far as what the governments are doing. Um, with Satan as their lead, they're going to come down when we get raptured. And um, I thought it was really interesting. It was one of those goosebump moments when me and my wife were over there watching it because I had multiple dreams where when the rapture had happened, these aliens, and they came down in flying saucers and everything. I mean, they went along with the alien ideology. They came down and just wrecked havoc 
I mean, it was not it was not nice. And my theory is that when we get raptured, the Antichrist will actually be the spokesman on behalf of the humans. I believe that may be what God will do because the Lord um, warns us that there's going to be a great deception. I feel like we're in the great deception right now. <coughs> but if you had a time, if you have a group, if you have people that get left behind that don't know the Lord, and all of a sudden they're seeing these so-called aliens, you know, coming down from the sky. You know, what do you what what do you think they're going to think? You know, I mean, that's going to be such a delusion beyond imagine. And and I I mean, it it is just it, everything is so lining up right now. You turn on even like um Fox News, you know, any of the news outlets, they're constantly talking about aliens. They're constantly talking about UFOs. You know, um since um I don't know if I think it was a year ago, maybe a little bit less than that, uh Trump ended, ended up declassifying a um um some uh, um, uh, government documents that basically talked about that we were putting in billions of dollars to basically chase UFOs. <laughs> you know, so I mean, our government was literally—I mean, they believe in the UFO uh, ideology. They believe that that is um, basically they're now teaching because of um, Darwinism and all that being discredited, since they can't make ba make people believe in, in uh, Darwinism and all that evolution all that then now they're trying to say that we come from aliens that's what they're pushing and you know it's kind of crazy you know it, it it's hard to it's hard to imagine um how we could get to this point how you know there could be a process over so many years that can lead up to this point but the satanists and the and the dark side they're hard workers i mean i'm going to tell you just from getting on here and speaking Satan attacked me so hard this week. It was ridiculous how hard he was attacking. Now, it, you know, it's useless for us Christians because there's nothing he can do to stop us because we got the Lord of the Lord, Lord of the Lord's protect us. But he is a hard worker. I will tell you, what, I, if there's one thing I can give credit to Satan for, it is the hard work he does. Because that guy, man, that freaking fallen angel, wow. And he has been working over these years for this time to deceive people into their own destruction. You know, Satan knows he's already lost. There's nothing he can do. He knows that his his end, it's already written. You know, God's resting in heaven right now, just like we should be resting in our patience in him and our knowing that he's going to have everything in control. But God is, in, is resting right now because on the seventh day when he said that it's finished, the Bible, everything was already written. Everything was ready to go. I mean, it wasn't written as far as Moses and everybody writing it, but God already knew how this story was going to play out. So Satan knew that too. And so Satan knows his end. He, I mean, he tries. He tries to do things. You know, he tries to stop, you know, like when Jesus was born, he tried to stop that. He tried to stop Moses. He tries to do things, but he always fails. So Satan knows he's going to fail. He knows his end. But he knows that if humans will go to hell with him, if he can take down as many humans as he can, it will hurt God. And that's what he is essentially doing. He's trying to deceive people into their own destruction. He wants people to believe the lies that are in this world. And there's a lot of lies. I mean, it's unbelievable how many, how blatant people will lie. There's no shame anymore. There is no shame for people to lie. You watch the news, and I can't even watch the news almost anymore because of all the lies that are on there. It's so ridiculous. I mean, it, it will push you to anger if you aren't careful, you know. But the lies that are in this world, you know. But Satan knows his, his end is coming. He knows his fall is near. So his final attempt to hurt God is to bring down as many humans as he can. And that's why we're God's ambassadors. God is imploring people through us to wake up, to be ready for the rapture. You know, Jesus died on the cross. He made it real easy for anybody to get to heaven. He said, if you believe in me, and, it, and um, I believe it was John that said it, where, and I could be wrong about that. Dr. Carter would know perfectly, what, probably what verse and chapter and everything, but where it talks about, you know, if you speak with your mouth that he is Lord and you believe in your heart that he, you know, he died on the cross for your sins, then you're saved. You know, the Lord made it real easy for us to be saved. He's not making it hard for people because he loves us. He doesn't want, you know, if you had a child, you know, my daughter, I look at my daughter, she grows up to mess up and do bad things. I'm never going to stop loving her. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that she's on the right foot. And I'm going to do everything I can to pray for her and, and, the, and the hope that she's going to be on the right. So you don't give up loving your children. And that's, that's what God's doing. He doesn't give up loving us. We just choose to give up on him. 
He implores to on us over and over. He gives us many signs. A lot of people will say the excuse like, oh, you know, God, why'd you do this to me? You know, I didn't see this coming. But if we're truthful with ourselves, God will reveal to us things that are going to happen in the future. That was the purpose of the Holy Spirit, was to tell us what was going to happen in the future. He speaks to us to let us know, to prepare us. And if we're walking faithfully with him, we're going to be prepared. We're going to know what's going to happen. And it's important for us to seek him out, to, to make the attempt to know. You know, if we're just, if we're not even trying to get to know the Lord, then there, we're not, I mean, for me, I was pretty fortunate. The Lord came to me when I was not looking for him. But most of the time, the Lord really requires us to walk by faith. He doesn't really do that. I mean, I'm sure he does that to a lot of people. But, I mean, to me, I think the Lord, you know, the Lord told when when he came back after he died on the cross, and he came to the disciples, and you had uh, Thomas the Doubter, you know, uh, you know, he said, I wouldn't believe in that. You know, I don't believe the Lord's going to come back unless I can take my finger and stick it in the very holes that he, you know, in his hands and, and all that. And, you know, most people would get, you know, think that the Lord would get mad about that. But when the Lord showed up, he didn't get mad about that. He said, look, Thomas, he said, stick your hand here. Check it out. I'm alive. I'm, I'm real. I'm not a ghost, you know. And he said, you know, blessed are those. He said, you've seen me, but blessed are those who have not seen me and believe in me. So if there are those out there that, have never had an encounter with the Lord, I would say to you that you are extremely blessed if you believe in the Lord. Because for you to walk by faith and without seeing the Lord himself, that is extremely amazing. That is incredible in this day and age that we live in. And you should be very proud of yourself if you're someone that's never, you know, don't get jealous or anything like that. You'll get your encounter with the Lord. If you keep walking with, faithfully with the Lord, I promise, I, and I tell this a lot to people, especially non-believers, I say just try it. Just try praying to the Lord. Just try talking to the Lord. Do it for like a month. Do it for, and I guarantee you less, uh, probably within the first couple of days of you doing it, you're going to have a dream or an encounter or something's going to happen that brings you to the Lord. Something will happen because he is real. He is real. And if he is real, that means that every one of his promises are real. That means between our inheritance, that's real. You know, between heaven, that's real. Uh, the kingdom of God, that's real. And including the rapture in the end times, that is real. That is his. Pro he he says it's going to happen. You know, a lot of people in this day and age, they talk about, you know, oh, we've heard it for years. You know, the Lord's coming back and he hasn't come back yet. You know, he'll, he he's going to come back, but it'll be in the future. Well, my argument with that is, it's been two thousand years since he's came back. I mean, he's it's pretty ripe for him to come back. It's been a pretty long while since he's been. You know, he's given us a lot of time to preach the gospel to the world. And in our day and age, with technology, TV, everything like that, satellites, there's not a single spot on this planet that you can go where you can't get the message of Jesus Christ. Even the countries that are trying to eliminate Jesus' name, you know, like China, North Korea, things like that, you know, they can't stop it. They get the Bibles get snuck in. You get pastors that go in there. And even when they lock them up, you know, they're still preaching to the inmates. I mean, Jesus is getting preached, whether they want to try to stop it or not. It is going to get preached. And it's up to us if we want to be rapture ready. It's up to us if we want to believe what he says he's going to do, especially in our time. It takes a lot of faith to trust someone like me. It takes a lot of faith to t trust someone like Dr. Carter, to put our faith in people that are preaching. You know, and especially over the years when you've had kind of, um, you know, Jesus talked about that, there was um, basically the tares and the wheat that would grow up together within the church. You know, you have the bad and the good that would grow up. And in the last days, the harvest time, you know, he plucks, he plucks it all. He takes the tares, throws them in the fire, takes the wheat, takes them up to him. And so it takes a lot of faith to believe that message. It, ta it takes a lot of faith. But if you really do the research, if you really look, if you really seek the Lord out, it will blow your mind about everything that is being fulfilled today, everything that... I mean, it should, be, it should be all over the news what's going on in the world right now. But yet, you know, the, the news keeps you focused on one thing. You know, a lot of it's anti-Trump. You know, it's like hate Trump, that's it. You know, or hate this or hate that. So they keep you focused on one thing. But if you can get beyond that and get beyond what they're trying to make everybody keep focused on and get into the Bible and start researching it, researching what the signs and everything, and through – Dr. Carter and Pastor Paul and people like that, you're going to get the truth. But if you do, if you go on top of that and do your more research, man, you will be so mind blown about all the things. I couldn't believe, I could not believe all the things that were going on 
just nine years ago when I started following the Lord. And over those years, as I kept like researching, and even to the point where I found Pastor Paul, and he was preaching the end times and all that, so I got to learn a lot from him. And, and um, through all that time, I learned so much. But in that time, I did not feel the way that I feel now. I feel so urgent right now. I mean, I feel a sense of urgency on my heart from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit. I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like that is the message that Lord, the Lord wants right now, is people to keep focused, to keep focused on His return, because it is going to happen. It is going to happen. It's not, I'm telling you guys, it's not going to be years from now. The Lord didn't tell me it was going to be years from now. When the rapture happened, it happened in my time, you know. I believe it's. I believe I'm not going to die. I believe that I'm going to experience the rapture with my own eyes, and I believe it's a lot sooner than what people think. I believe if if the Lord told us the exact day of the rapture, we would all we would all be so mind blown. We'd be we would just be oh man, we would be doing so much for the Lord. It would be ridiculous. But we don't know the day, so we have to walk by faith and know that okay, we don't know the day, but we know we're in that season, so we need to be ready. We need to be ready every every second, every moment. And again, like I said, you know, from Matthew twenty four thirty six all the way through chapter twenty five of Matthew, the Lord over and over again talks about being ready for the Lord. Now, I thought it was really cool. Um, Am I going over time, Doctor Carter? I can't tell. I I'm not keeping track of time or anything. But you got another hour, brother. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to keep her much time that long. You, you're you're so encouraging and so. Oh man. But anyways, I will. Take a sip of water. Take a sip of water. <laughs> and keep on okay. Uh, there you go. Uh, I was um writing down some things right before I got on here, like I was saying about Pastor Steve Chiklani. Again, you guys should check him out. He's really amazing. It's very scientific. You know, he talks a lot about the facts and everything about the Bible and everything. But he talks about this prayer that was in Psalm 143, verse 12. And I thought it was really cool because, you know, we live in a time where we're seeing all this wickedness all around. And Christians are having a hard time deciding what we should do. You know, a lot of Christians, yes, we do walk by love, you know, and we... We try to persuade people out of love, out of gentleness, out of kindness, you know, out of our actions, how we treat people. That's how we persuade people, how we, you know, serve people, things like that. But at the same time, there is a part of God that rains down judgment. God does not put up with sin. In fact, God will not put up with sin to the point where he won't even allow it in his presence. You know, people will say that, you know, once I die and see the Lord, then I'll ask for forgiveness, things like that. I've heard that. And I'm like, you cannot wait for that. There's no way because when you die, you're not going to see the Lord. There's no sin in the Lord. The Lord can't allow sin to be in his presence. And so there is a part of God that really wants the church to be, you know, I heard a, um, there was a man that's a good friend of my, ours, me and my wife, and he was talking about how he was praying for Hollywood and all that. And if people see what's really going on in there, it's really, it's it's pretty nasty what 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 the dark side is really doing behind the scenes as far as with children, with sacrificing, things like that. But he was praying for it, and he was basically praying that the Lord would would wake up those that were doing the wickedness, that they would change, he would change their heart. And, and in, in actuality, that's like to me, that sounds like a, a good prayer. Like I, I, you know, I want all people to come to repentance. I want all people to be saved. Well, as he was praying this, he said the Lord spoke to him, and he said, "Do not pray for those people." He said, "Those people are committing wickedness." He said, "Pray for the the the, the ones that are." Uh, he said, pray for the children, pray for the um, the women, pray for the fathers that are over, you know, watching their families being destroyed. Pray for the people that are suffering. He said, pray for those people. He said, don't pray for these wicked people. He said, because I'm going to rain judgment on these people. And in Psalm 143, verse 12, it says, oh, you know, I, I had this in the King James Version, but let me find it here. Okay, Psalm 143, verse 12. So I'm in the uh, NIV version, but I like the King, King James translation better. I think it's a better translation personally. But it says, In your unfailing love, silence my enemies, destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. In the King James version it says, instead of saying in, in your unfailing love, I believe it says in your mercy, uh, in your mercy, uh, uh, silence my enemies, destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. So David is saying that 
I'm your servant, Lord. I'm having people come against me. <laughs> it's and, and part of your mercy says that you will destroy the my enemies if they come against me. So David was praying for his enemies to be destroyed, literally. He was literally praying for them to be silenced. Destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. You know, and as the servants of God, we shouldn't put up with what's going on in this world. We shouldn't allow the government to come in and tell us we what we can and can't do to our children, you know, or what we can and can't say as Christians and, and things like that. And if you notice in the world, they're not really attacking any other religion besides Christianity. That should be a, a sign to people right there that there is truth to what we're preaching. There's there's something that this world does not want to be revealed to the public, and we shouldn't put up with this much longer. You know, you know. The Bible talks about twice God was really led to anger to the point where he, well, well, actually it's only happened once. We're about to see it the second time, but only one time did the world truly see God's un, like, I, I don't, unimaginable anger, you could call it. But he destroyed the world with his anger, with a flood. This time it says he's going to destroy the world with fire. The Lord is not happy with what's going on in the world. Now, he loves us. He's happy with us. And when he comes, he is... It is going to be a glorious moment for us when we get reunited with our Savior. And for anybody for, that's ready for the Lord, for that matter, it's going to be a glorious time, an amazing time. So for us, this just means that blessing's coming. But to the world, this is judgment. This is not good. You know, like, for instance, any time that God had mercy on the Israeli people, for instance, like when they were getting out of Egypt, God rained judgment on their foes. God had to... And then as far as even the Israelites going into uh, the promised land, you know, God ordered them to destroy all the inhabitants of the land. And a lot of people would take that and like, oh, you know, God's mean, God's angry, blah, blah, blah. But if you've seen what was going on in that land, it was no different than what we see today between the human sacrificing, the sexualization, you know, it was, it was just wicked. You know, people, it was wicked what was going on to the point where even if you read in, uh, when Lot, you know, Abraham's, I believe it was his nephew, when Lot... Uh, was was when the, the angels came to see if there was any righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. You had the men that came to Lot's house, and he had daughters, virgin daughters. The men were demanding the angels to come out to sleep with them, like basically to abuse them. They weren't looking at the women. You know, they were looking at those angels to abuse. So it was so wicked in that culture that they were willing to do anything. I mean... And like I said, it's really no different than what you see today. I mean, when you see the transgender movement, when you see the gay and lesbian movement, and it's not that we don't love those people, but we don't love what, what they're being pushed into. We don't love what they're doing. We don't love the sin that's going on in this world. And if these people knew the truth, they wouldn't be doing what they were doing. But you can't, you can't go to these people and tell them the truth because then we get labeled racist or sexist and blah, 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 blah. They've twisted the good and made it, you know, they've, they've twisted so much in our day and age. So... Our prayer for right, for right now should be, Lord, in your mercy, silence our enemies. In your mercy, what do you say here? Destroy, destroy all my foes. You know, we should be praying, and on top of that, we should be praying for the Lord's coming. Because the only way that this world is going to get better, it's not going to get better if we elect the right politicians. I personally think Donald Trump's doing a great job. I think he... You know, people can disagree with me or whatever, but the guy's 70-something years old. You know, he could he could be sitting on a beach right now, you know, enjoying something, not doing anything, enjoying his money, blah, blah, blah. But he's seen what was going on in this world, and he's seen what was going on in the United States, and he chose to basically sacrifice his life, his, his peace, you know, to try to bring us peace, to try to bring us security. Now, we know as Christians it's not going to happen. You know, it's not going to work through government. But... At the same time, we should be praying that, you know, uh, even as far as servants like him, that we should be praying for him. We should be praying for leaders to do the right thing. We should be praying for, for the, you know, but at the same time, we should be praying for judgment. We should be praying for God to silence enemies. We should be praying for him to destroy all of our foes. I, um, I used to really have a hard time with uh, the judgment part of it, especially talking to people about it, because we live in a, a really um, a sensitive world, you know. You talk about certain things and people get really offended, you know. I'm the type of person, I don't get offended by what people say. I have disagreements with that, with people, even like within the church, I'll have disagreements, but I don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me, you know. That's just us being human, 
we all have our own opinions. We all have our own, um, you know, truths that God puts on our heart and things like that as far as um, certain doctrines, things like that. But in our day and age, you know, people get really offended when you talk about certain things. And I think that's part of the, uh, the whole goal of making people fall into this delusion that, that Jesus isn't real, that Jesus isn't going to return, that this isn't going to happen. It's so close, you guys. I mean, it, it is just it is just so close. I, I just can't – for the Lord to put me in a platform right here, for Dr. Carter to even allow me to speak on this and speak this message, it tells me that the Lord wants this message out. He's very urgent about it. He keeps putting people in my path to talk about, you know, how the Lord told me in dreams that the rapture was going to happen. He keeps putting – and I can tell you guys right now that the, the person that he told me who the Antichrist was, um, I can tell you right now he's he, – He's here. He's here right now. And um, it's one of those things that we'll wait and see. Um, I want people to be more focused on the rapture because the Antichrist isn't our – that's not what we're going to deal with. He's not going to even reveal himself until after the rapture. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit's removed, then the, uh, the uh, uh, Antichrist will then be revealed. So he won't reveal himself until after the Holy Spirit's removed. So it's really not – I mean um, – it is interesting to talk about things like that, and we can sh we can prove how the, that we're being built up into that antichrist reign. But I think the main message that God wants is to be rapture ready. That's the message that God. That's you know, Doctor Carter was talking about in class on Wednesday that we all have a song, you know, this, and that is my song. My song that the Lord told me to tell people was that He was coming back, and for me to be able to have a platform right here to tell you guys that. It tells me it's urgent. It's very, very urgent. Um, I actually feel in my heart, you know, I still got uh, a lot of time before I get done with school, you know. I feel in my heart we're going to be gone before I get done with school. I really don't think that I'm going to get done with school before he returns. Based on what I see in the world, and maybe, you know, maybe he will. Maybe, maybe we will be here for a couple more years. But even if we are here for a couple more years, we still need to be preaching the rapture every day. Every day. You know, in the early church, when they performed all these miracles and these signs, a lot of people are like, "Why isn't the church like that?" And that, like when it first began, where you people, where the sick were healed and 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 just miracles were happening left and right. Well, the reason why is because we're not preaching the same message in the church today. You have certain people that are preaching the same message, Dr. Carter, Paul, people like that. But overall, the main church won't even, you know, the church that we go to. I actually feel very spiritually filled right now. Because of being on this service. But the church that I go to, I t you know, the Lord told me many times that they're a lukewarm church because they're a mega church. They're a big church that we go to. And, it, and again, this is, is not me preaching judgment against these people. But what I'm saying is they're not preaching the right message. You know, people are going to this church, and it's basically a routine. These people um, don't understand the Holy Spirit. They don't understand the end times. They don't understand the rapture, things like that. And I've, I've found that a lot of those big churches like that are the same way. They're so worried that they're going to scare people off if they preach certain things. So they won't say certain messages in order to keep a crowd. It's all about the popularity and everything like that. And um, as far as the pastor for the church, I can't say anything bad about him because he's a great guy. He's a good man of God. And I, I pray that he would stop worrying. I think he worries too much about being a pastor of that church rather than – um, I think he's worried that he might get fired if he starts preaching the right message. And I'm, I'm praying that he would get over that. And I'd ask all you guys to pray for that too because he is a wonderful man of God. But at the same time, you know, the, the Lord told me that this is a lukewarm church. And a lot of these mega churches are lukewarm churches. Um, you have some good ones out there, you know. Um, I personally like Creflo Dollar's church. I think he's awesome. But uh, there's some good ones out there, you know. And But at the same time, the church that I go to, you don't really get filled with the Holy Spirit. The music plays. It's real monotone because they don't want to, you know, frighten the elder people, you know. It's like, so everything's real quiet and hush. And it's like, it, it really, I mean, I'm drinking three cups of coffee to stay awake. I hate to say that. But I, I do everything I can to stay awake because it is just, you don't get spiritually fed when you're there. You don't. And it's sad to say that because the church, I, I've been going to this church for over 10 years. Um. I wasn't a believer, like I said, um, when I started having dreams about the Lord and all that. But I was going to that church because of my friends. I had some friends in high school that went to it. And um, they would do things like uh, um, like they'd get together and play football and things like that. And I always go out and do things with them, you know, with the church. And um, 
But I didn't, I didn't believe. You know, I wasn't a believer. Um, but in that time, I liked how the church was. I mean, I, I did feel something off the church. I knew there was something different and as far as what this church was doing. But over the years, it's just completely fallen away. It's completely, you walk in there, and it, it almost feels, it just feels like, like something's missing. It, well, it's got to be the Holy Spirit, but it feels dead. You know, it feels like, like there's no life in it. You know, people are going there, and, 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 and they're walking out, and their week isn't getting any better. Their days aren't getting any better, because in our time, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse and worse, you know, and, and so people are going to these churches, then they're not getting what they need. They're not getting the truth, and so what's happening is we're seeing this falling away. We're seeing a change as far as who Jesus is. You know, Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 that many would come in his name claiming, I am he, and a lot of people think that that means that you know, you're going to have people that say, oh, I'm Jesus Christ. And obviously that's going to happen because you do see that now. I see it just in, just like a week ago. I seen a guy that calls himself Jesus Christ that lives in, like, Georgia or something like that or Florida or somewhere around there. He literally uh, – that his followers believe he is Jesus Christ. So you do have a sense of people saying, I am Christ, I am he. But I believe personally what Jesus was saying is that you're going to have people that claim Jesus is this, but he's really this. I believe that's what's really happening in our day and age. People are saying, oh, Jesus is, you know, um, um, you know this loving, um, kind Savior who accepts everybody and, and would never punish anybody and things like that. You're seeing that kind of um, loving, overly loving message. And I, I don't want to say that without sounding like, like wrong because Jesus is the ultimate love. I mean, there's no greater love than what he did for us. You know, so nobody loves us more than what Jesus does. But at the same time, Jesus has rules, you know, he, 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 he has order. Um, like I said, he, he, he doesn't, you know, he, he hates sin so much that he was willing to die on the cross to eliminate sin. That's how much he hates it. He was willing to shed his own blood to eliminate sin. I mean, he can't stand sin, you know. And he also doesn't really look at it like it's our fault. He looks at it more like Adam and Eve brought sin into this world if they hadn't done what they'd done. You know, just it says in there, just like sin came through one man, Adam, you know, righteousness came through one man, Jesus Christ. So Jesus does have a sense of, like, understanding for us, you know, when we do, because we all, we have, I mean, as long as we're here, we're going to, we are, we're saved from our sin by Jesus, but we're all going to mess up. Every one of us are going to mess up as long as we're here, until Jesus comes. But at the same time, uh, those that, you know, I, I have always felt like, if you sin and you repent, you know, then the Lord is faithful and he will, you know. But if you're someone that, and this is what I see a lot going in our day and age, if you're a person that kind of gets caught up with sin and you keep doing it over and over again, and then you got the government telling you it's okay, and you got everything around you telling you it's okay, then you're going to completely ignore what Jesus says is okay and do what you think is okay. And so, yeah, you may, you may claim Jesus as, you know, a, a believer and everything, but you are actually turning people away from the true message of the gospel, the true message of Jesus, when you when you do those things. And again, I'm not trying to call out anybody because we're all, you know, we all have our own fair share of problems and everything like that. But there is a, a there is a, a a movement right now where people are not getting the true message of Jesus Christ. They're not getting what what he really did, what what he's going to do, what he has to do. And the logic behind why he's going to do it. People aren't getting those messages. All they're getting is a, again, it's the peace and safety. They're getting a peace and safety message. You know, oh, don't worry about anything because everything's, you know, nothing bad's going to happen to earth. Nothing bad will happen to you. Things like that. I even, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Take some water. Whew. I've been having this really bad. I had to go buy me some cough drops the other day because I got a scratchy throat. But, um. I, uh, I I I see um, another thing I see within uh, Jesus. We live in a world where people basically believe there's truth in all religions. You know, God constantly would tell the Israelites, "I'm the one God. I'm the one true God. There's no other God besides me." God would remind the Israelites that He is the only God. He is the only way. And then Jesus would talk about if you want to get to the Father, if you want to seek the kingdom of heaven. You have to come through me. I'm the way. I'm the doorway. I'm the gateway. I'm, you know, I'm the way. So I see this delusion within the world today where people are saying there's truth besides Jesus Christ. And that's the other lie that I see. You know, there is no truth besides Jesus Christ. And our world is just so, there is, 
it is crazy in my like what you see how people are so willing to lie and not tell the truth in our day and age and I'm talking about politicians I'm talking about you know newscasters things like that people that you would think they would be fired for the things that are said you know to the to our culture but they're not now um, I was uh, talking to a, um, um, a friend of mine and, and they uh, they're having a hard time because uh, they they have some people that they really love and care for but in their heart they know that they're not living right but they're kind of being um, because they love those people they're kind of being tricked into thinking well there's many truths like into all religions and into all aspects of life and everything like that not just Jesus is the truth and um, it's it's kind of scary to think that we live in a world where there's so many lies and the only truth that we have is Jesus Christ but yet people don't truly believe that that is the true truth you know that is the truth like I said if you truly seek Jesus if you truly seek what he stood for and what he talked about and then what he warned us about the future and things like that everything that's going on in our world today will make sense everything will make sense everything comes together it will mind blown you it will it will amaze you when you truly in your heart believe that Jesus is the one true way and that his way is the right way no other way is right and you walk that path and you start researching those things and you start researching people that do walk that path and that do teach um, you know what Jesus did and, and give you history and things like that when you go down that road you will get amazed by how much truth really is in Jesus Christ I mean it is so much it's just you know the Bible calls uh, uh, Jesus the word you know and, and, and the word it uses is logos and that word is the word that we get for logic so essentially Jesus is the logic you know there's no other logic in the world there's nothing that makes sense really that's what the Bible says there's nothing else that makes sense besides Jesus Christ he is our logic he is our knowledge our our truth everything and when you finally walk that path knowing that in your heart he will reveal things to you that just bring everything together it, it it will get your rapture ready because you will realize that we are in that time we are in that that time where he can come at any moment as a thief in the night we must be ready we must be ready at all times um, and to show you how close we are to that peace and safety that sudden destruction I was researching uh, I was trying to get some uh, um, laws to read and the actual articles to show about ambassadors and, and, and war and things like that to show what God's plan on doing and uh, I was I was I was laughing because I went on UN's website and uh, they have a little section where it talks about um, basically their their job what their what they do and in big bold letters it says that they are there to I wrote it down it was their goal is to maintain peace and safety to maintain peace and security that's the UN's goal I mean, this, you can't even make this up anymore. These people are literally screaming to us the time that we are in. And they don't even realize it. People that don't believe in the Lord are fulfilling Bible prophecy right now, and they have no clue. That's how powerful our God is. Our God can use people that don't even know him and make him fulfill. I would argue Donald Trump probably didn't know the Lord that well until he got in office. And I think now he's, with the pastors that he has surrounding him and, and whatnot, I believe that he is becoming more and more of a faithful Christian. But, I mean... The Lord will use people that don't even know him to fulfill Bible prophecy. That's how powerful God is. I mean, he will use anything that it takes to wake up his people, to talk to his people, to, to show his people. And again, we're his ambassadors. He's going to speak through us. You know, the Lord's not going to... Um, I, I can't remember which disciple it was. But one of them said, you know, Lord, you reveal yourself to us, but why won't you reveal yourself to the world? Um, I believe it was right in the Garden of Geth Gethsemane where he was like at the verge of being taken to the cross and everything like that, being crucified and all that. It was right before all that. But, you know, he was asking, why wouldn't you? Why don't you reveal yourself to, to the world? Why are you just revealing yourself to us? And the point is, Jesus is revealing himself to the world through us. That's what he's doing. It's all by faith. If he were to just show up and, you know, say, hey, I'm the Lord, you know, then... He's breaking the free will covenant that he's made with us. There's a free will covenant that allows us to make our own decisions, that allows us that where unless we want him to be our savior and our, gui our guide and everything like that, it takes us to have to want that. We have to want him to want to be our guide, or we have to want him 
to be our guide. We have to seek him out, to search him out. If we're not going to do that, more than likely the Lord's not going to come to you. He, he will speak to all people, but not all people are going to know how to listen. They're not going to know how to see, not going to know how to hear if they don't follow the Lord. You're not going to have those spiritual eyes, ears, things like that. So, I, I you know, I, going back to the UN thing, um, I just thought it was so funny. You know, it's, there's just so many things that are so close to that time where it says peace and safety and then sudden destruction. Um, <laughs> um, I was reading in a, uh, again, going, I, I, I wish I would have kept the article. I didn't want to, I didn't want to like, I didn't have a way of printing it out or anything because I had just seen it before I got on here. But it was, it was that doctor I was saying at the beginning of this message about how he wakes up and every moment he prays, you know, Lord, make me ready, make me ready, make me ready. Make sure that I'm ready. And, um, in Second Peter chapter three verses eleven through twelve, it actually tells us that our duty as Christians is to pray to speed His coming. I thought it was really interesting. I actually didn't know this was in there, and um, I've seen this. I'm like, man, I am not doing my duty because I have not been praying for the Lord to come back. I mean, I've been pr I do pray for the Lord to come back, but I didn't know that the Bible literally told us to to do that. You know, and it's that's the other thing. You know, when you're when you walk with the Lord. You know, it says that the word gets put on your heart, and I've found that I've told people things that were in the Bible that I had no clue were in the Bible, and then all of a sudden I'd watch the pastor or something, and he would bring up a Bible verse. I'm like, wow, that's cool, you know. Second um, Peter chapter three. But the Lord, He will, He will re reveal, He will speak to us whether we know the Bible inside and out. He will speak the right words if we yield ourselves to Him. But anyways, Second Peter chapter three, verse eleven. Uh, through 12 it says uh, since everything will be destroyed in this way what kind of people ought you to be and he says that everything will be destroyed by fire uh, it says you ought to live a holy and or live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed it's coming so that speed it's coming it's talking about you know praying to speed it's coming it's talking about uh, asking God to make that day come um, the Bible calls it our blessed hope the day of the the day of the Lord, the day of the rapture, and all that—that's our blessed hope, that we really won't be in the the real promised land until that day comes. So we should all be praying for that day to come. We should all, the whole church, if we would all pray for that day, man, I I, I feel like we would see so many miracles. It would be unbelievable. It's happening. I mean, people are waking up. I I see it. I, you know, the, like I said, the Lord is so mighty. He, he will not, <laughs> he's not going to give everybody a chance without first getting the, the opportunity of, of accepting this message of his return. But at the same time, there's also a push back from the governments, from Satan, to try to uh, persuade people into not believing in Jesus and, and try to discredit the Bible. So you have a war going on, a spiritual war going on between God and Satan of people getting ready for the rapture and people getting left behind. And our job as Christians is to get people ready, to get this message out, to tell people, pray for this coming. If you're in church and you believe in Jesus, you should be praying for him to come back because it is going to be so amazing for us when he comes. It's going to be so glorious. I mean, all the suffering will end, all the sorrow, all the sickness, all the disease, everything that is bad in this world that was brought on by sin and by Satan and by Adam and Eve not obeying God's word everything that came on this world that we live through, it will not be here. We will live in paradise. I mean, like I said before, that pastor, you know, he said within five minutes, you know, we're going to wish we prayed more, served more, did all these things more because we're going to be so happy in heaven. We're going to be reunited with people that we've that have gone on with the Lord. We're going to be reunited with family members. I've had encounters where the Lord gave me glimpses of heaven, and um, I actually asked him not to do it because I wanted to be surprised when I got there. But he kind of ignored me the Lord will do that he'll kind of ignore you sometimes and do, do things anyways but he showed me a little glimpse of it and what caught my attention the most in heaven were the colors it sounds weird but the colors in heaven are so vivid and full of life you can look at it at a um, it almost is like a LED light a glow like the colors have a glow that comes off of them and it has a warmth you look at the colors, you can look at the trees, everything, the grass, things like that, and it, it gives you life, it gives you peace, it gives you warmth inside of you. Your body is going to be, it is going to be glorified. 
it is going to be beyond glory. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. I mean, we're going to tell the Lord one day, Lord, we don't deserve this. We don't. And He's going to say, Hey, stupid, you didn't deserve it because you accepted me. You know. So, <laughs> I mean, that is my song. That is my message. That is my preaching. If I can get anybody to believe anything, it's that Jesus is the Savior. He is the truth. There is no truth besides Him. But He is coming back too. That is the truth in our time. That is, Jesus said that he talked about <coughs> how you know these people could uh, look at the sky and they could tell that the weather was going to rain or it was be fair weather based on the seasons and all the sky and everything like that. They they could tell that they could tell seasons and everything like that. But he said you cannot tell the season that you're in now. You know, so he talks about that we should be aware of the season spiritually that we're in right now, the season that we're in. We're in the last days. We are. And it's not going to take a lot of time, contrary to what people think. There's a lot of things that I could talk about on here. I, I personally would like to have the, the articles and everything so I could show it to prove that it is, you know, for real. Um, so it's not just based on you believing what I say. But there are so many things right now that are happening right now as far as uh, um, destruction that could – it could happen so quick. I was telling Dr. Carter that on Thursday, well, actually, it started Wednesday night. We started losing power, and I was so mind blown. It was only two, pretty much two days, pretty much two days were without power. But I was so amazed about how uh, spoiled we are with power, you know. And, and, and just in those two days, you know, we were making a fire, we were using candles, things like that to try to see and everything. It was it sucked. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard, you know. It was not fun, but. We got through it, you know, and our power came back on just at the right time. It came back on yesterday, so I was able to prepare for this message and everything like that. But what it told me was that we are so blessed with everything that we have right now. We are so blessed, but yet we are so focused on so much negativity. You know, instead of thanking the Lord for all that we have, we're so quick to be like, Lord, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Can you give me this? We don't look back and see all that he's already given us, all that he's gotten us through, all that he's... Uh, you know, just from me being a kid till now, all the things that he's gotten my parents and me through is amazing. It blows my mind when you look back at it. And um, the Lord wants us to be ready. He wants us to know that he's come back. He wants us to, because he wants to be with us. He wants to spend eternity with us. He's looking forward to spending eternity with us. But in those two days, it was just so funny to me because it was like we just looked like we did not know what we were going to do. We, I mean, it was only two days, too. And I just can't imagine if, if something happened where we lost power in this whole world, you know, how would people survive? You know, you go to school and they teach you, uh, you know, the subjects and everything like that. Nothing wrong with that, whatever. But they don't teach people how to survive in situations. They don't teach you how to make fires or how to, uh, you know, go out and hunt and things like that or how to farm and things like that. They don't teach those things. And my thinking is, you know, if we're going to survive as a nation, we, we you know, for us, it's not going to matter because we're going to get to go in the rapture. But for the people that do get left behind, like that's things, you know, unless you want to accept the mark of the beast and you lose out on salvation, then that's your choice, you know. But <laughs> other than that, you're not buying or selling unless you don't, you know, unless you do accept the mark of the beast. You can't buy or, or oh, gosh, I'm getting tongue tied. But you will not buy or sell unless you accept the mark of the beast. So basically, you're going to have to find a way to survive without accepting that mark. And I, I just, man, I just look at our time. And just in those two days, it, it really showed me that we as a, as a society, as a culture, are not ready for what's about to happen. We are not prepared for what's going to happen. That's why it's going to be so devastating. Jesus said there's never going to be a time as devastating as what's about to happen in this world. And I just can't think of, because of us being so pampered with power and electricity and all those things, I can't imagine how devastating it's going to be if something were to happen as far as power and all that were to go out. If we were to have that lights out moment. You know, there's a, um, there's a, I'll say this, and I'll finally stop yapping my jaws here. Uh, I'll give a shout out to my classmates too. I want to give a shout out to a few people before I get off here. But I'll kind of close up with this. Um, um, oh gosh, I was just about to say something. I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh man, I was talking about the pe uh, the power going out. I just cannot. Wow. I distracted myself. I by looking at my shout outs but uh um anyways the point is uh we just live in a culture that is just not ready for what's about oh i was going to say this this is what i'll say it'll close there is a, a uh, north korean satellite it's called the i believe it's called the bright star 
And I may be wrong about that, that you'd have to research that for yourself and make sure that that's right. But I believe it's called the Bright Star. It flies over the United States at least seven times a day. This thing is the same size as a uh, Super EMP that uh, the same size the Super EMP that Russia contains. So they believe back in so back in 2004, supposedly Russia accidentally you know lost a Super EMP to uh, North Korea or well. They said they lost it, but we, we really don't know what happened. They said the satellite that North Korea has flying over the United States is the exact size that a Super EMP could fit on it. They said that if they were to drop the Super EMP on us, it would not over, only knock out the United States power. It would knock out Canada and parts of Mexico's power. This thing flies over seven times a day. Back in uh, 2000, I want to say it was like 2015, somewhere around there, me and my dad was listening to uh, a talk radio. And uh, there was a guy who was the head of the military, our military, who was like the finance part. And he had uh, requested a billion dollars, one billion dollars from Obama, because he would have to, in order to get money for finances for the military, he would have to make requests to the president. Well, uh, he made a request for one billion dollars to make our infrastructure so strong that even a super EMP or a uh, solar eclipse or <laughs> solar eclipse, a solar flare would not uh, bring down our infrastructure. We'd still have power. Well, Obama denied it. And you figure every second right now we're spilling, spending billions of dollars a day. Every, I mean, seconds we are spending billions of dollars a day. What would $1 billion hurt to spend that on our infrastructure to make sure we wouldn't run out of power? And it got denied. So it makes you have to ask the question, what is really going on here? What is going on here? When you got um, – I was reading in Forbes magazine about a year ago too how all these uh, millionaires and these billionaires and stuff are uh, building underground bunkers, and they're, they're elaborate, and they're, they're made to last for like up to a year or something like that, and they come stocked with food and everything. And they're building these underground bunkers. you got some that are fleeing out of the country to places like New Zealand and things like that. But they're fleeing. They're getting out of the United States. They know something's about to happen. They're not saying anything, but they know something's about to happen. I personally believe maybe Yellowstone has something to do with it because over the couple, past couple of years, you've had animals fleeing. Um, I've also had dreams about um, what I believed was Russia invading the United States. Um, there's people dreaming about uh, tidal waves taking out New York City. My wife was one of them that had a dream about that, and so was uh, – uh, Pastor Perry Stone, if anybody watches him, he had a dream about that also. But th the point is, there's so much in our world right now that could cause our day to change like that. And when we lost power, you know, we weren't told by the DPNL. We weren't told, hey, you know, heads up, you're going to lose power. You know, it wasn't like that at all. There was, no, there was no warning on it. It just happened suddenly. It happened instantly. And I wonder, like, how, how, you know, how quick could our world change? with how much that you see going on in this world, how quick things could change. We see, you know, in our hearts we see, you know, everything's all sound, everything's peace and safety, you know. And, and, and with the appearance of the economy, it's looking like it's getting better in the United States. That's all part of that delusion to try to make people think that we are not in the end days. We are not in the last days. We are not in the time where Jesus is going to return and take his people. But we are. We are in that day. We are in that time. If you look in the Bible, all of the main people that we consider – great and holy and all the prophets and all them we consider them so awesome and everything today and they were they were so awesome but you go back and you read what those people had to deal with in their time it was not awesome they were called they were mocked they were made fun of nobody listened to them the the people that were preaching the truth were 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 usually killed you know at, at some point the people that were preaching the truth had so much adversity that Literally, they were pretty much by themselves. I mean, you had other people that would listen, but for the most part, they were a remnant. They were a, a small group of people, just like the Bible says, we're the remnant. We're the small group of people that is going to be ready for the rapture. And that, everybody, would be my message for you, is be rapture ready. And that's actually the words of the Lord. He told me to preach that message, to be rapture ready. I wanted to give a couple shout-outs before I got off here um, to Malia, Sandra, and Karen. They're all uh, students in our class, and... They're so awesome. I wish I, – if you guys could have heard uh, um, uh, Mrs. Jackie Carter got in an accident uh, uh, two weeks ago. And um, so uh, it's kind of scary because we got on on the class and we didn't see Dr. Carter and we didn't hear anything. And, you know, we were like, well, we'll just get on and wait for him and everything. But that 
that message between all us all talking was so amazing. I wish everybody could have heard what they were talking about. There was so much confirmation, so much. Oh man, the power of the Holy Spirit was so strong in that in that time. But um, I wanted to give them a shout out. I hope they see this. I hope they uh, uh, their spirit agrees with what I said. I hope you guys agree with what I said. Um, I pray that if any of you are kind of questioning the rapture and all that, that that my message would have brought more truth to you, more comfort, more knowledge, knowing that we are going to experience this. You know, God is logical. He's not, this is not random. You know, we're not crazy Christians, you know, as people like to call us. We're not crazy. We know what we're talking about. We we know the truth. We are the ones that have the truth, you know, and we need to be convinced of that at all times. And again, pray for the rapture to happen. Pray for Jesus to come so he can restore everything, so he can save us, so he can bring us to peace, so he can save the ones that are going through suffering. Pray for that. And then pray also for, you know, it's hard for people to hear this. Pray for his judgment. You know, I am so sick and tired of seeing what's going on in this world. I'm so sick and tired of seeing kids being tortured. I'm so sick and tired of seeing women being tortured. I'm so sick and tired of seeing fathers and families and, and us feeling like we can't do anything about it. But you know what? We can do something about it. We got God on our side. There's nothing more powerful than God. Nothing. All Satan's doing right now, he knows he's going to be destroyed. He's just trying to convince people to believe his lies. That's all he's doing. So don't fall in that trap. Don't fall in the trap of his lies. You know that you're the, you're the truth bearer. You know that you have the truth because of Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit inside of you. So believe it. Believe it with everything you got. Believe it with everything you got. I don't care if everybody comes to you. I don't care if your whole family kicks you out. A lot of my family, you know, I hate to admit it, but some of my family won't even talk to us, especially since I've become a Christian like I am. They won't even talk to us. You know what? So be it. So be it. I got family that is far beyond anything that's bloodline. So believe it, you guys. Believe it. And keep watching Dr. Carter and support him. Support what Dr. Carter's doing. Man, he is a wonderful man. I tell you what, I look forward to Wednesdays every time. Uh, man, I get I get so filled with the Spirit every Wednesday night. It, I wish all of you guys could come on there one time and see what Dr. Carter teaches about. But keep watching him. Keep supporting him. Because we need these people. These are warriors. You know, These are warriors for God. And if we don't support them, then who will? The world's not going to support Dr. Carter. The world's not going to support the people of God. We got each other. You know, we're the family of God. We're the family of Jesus Christ. So we need to support each other. And that means, you know, a lot of people get scared with the money thing. But that means financially. You know, Dr. Carter does need to get paid for what, you know, he needs to be able to preach what he's saying. And then as far as people like Paul Bagley and guys like that, you know, he's traveling the world. He needs financial help. He needs help. You know, these guys are not millionaires, you know. We are not blessed with all the money in the world, or this world would be far different than what it was. But we need, the, the people of God need to come together and support each other in this time. So, everybody, I love you guys. I pray that you were enlightened by what I had to say. I pray that maybe um, uh, you guys can use a little bit of uh, what I talked about and maybe use it for if you need any uh, help. You know, trying to convince people about the rapture and everything like that. Um, talk about the ambassador thing. A lot of people like that. A lot of people will understand it when you talk about us being ambassadors to Christ. And the fact that the reason why we get raptured is it's a sign to the world that God is now going to declare war against the world. He's calling us home to, sh to bring about his wrath so that we don't get caught in the crossfire. So, so talk to people about it. You know, keep, keep praying for it. Keep, keep speaking about it. Don't let this world bring you down. Don't let this world make you think that you're not... Not who you are, you know, your son or daughter to God, which means you are a king or a queen or a princess or a, a prince, whatever you want to look at it. That's what you are. You are that. And you need to believe that 100% with all of your heart and your mind and your soul. Don't let this world bring you down. Don't let this world destroy your hope. Don't let this, this world destroy your faith. And don't let it convince you that there are other truths out there besides Jesus Christ. He is the only truth. Seen him with my own eyes. He's real. <laughs> He's real. That's why I called Israel Israel, because he is real, you know. He's real. So guys, I I I bless you. I pray for blessings over you in Jesus' name. I pray for peace over you. I pray for love and a sound mind in these evil and wicked times. And I I pass it back over to Doctor Carter. <laughs> praise God, praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Andrew, that was magnificent. Awesome. Totally awesome. Praise God. I thank God for Andrew Hawkins. 
for that mighty word. And I just, I just watched you, praise God. And uh, uh, you all stay on just for a few more minutes, please. I watched you, Andrew, and um, you start off, and I just wrote a list of things at peace. You were at peace as you presented. You were confident. You were well poised. You were user friendly. You were joyful. You were exciting. And and I said, Andrew has a message for people. You spoke prophetically. I mean, the list could go on and on and on. And we give God the glory. We give God all the glory and all the accolades for using you. And praise God. And uh, even when you start coughing and and and, and, and and so keep that Sorry bottle about that. Of water. You present keep that bottle of water nearby. But we just thank God. Father God, we just thank you for Andrew. Thank you for his message. Thank you for using him. Thank you for his wife Cheryl, their child. Thank you for blessing the household. Thank you for restoring the power when the power uh, failed. Thank you for using this man of God. And thank you for, for presenting the word to us. We receive your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that people who are watching this video will and watch the recording will hear the word of God that they will become rapture ready. I pray, Lord, that those who are not saved will receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And for those who are saved, that they will maintain, stand in the gap, and keep their eyes on you and be faithful. And we bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to...